Story RH, the podcast that makes a long story short. Welcome to all. History is made of stories. In this episode, we'll be talking about properly managing data in human resources departments. Beginning in the 1990s, the arrival of HRIS did away with old-fashioned information catalogs and gave HR professionals access to quality data. In the 2000s, HR processes led to demand for better HR data management. Rationalization, which was front and center, would help to protect and preserve the quality of HR data. But HR professionals were disappointed. How many companies still have trouble accurately counting their employees? So, before hailing the virtues of big data and HR analytics, maybe we should get back to the basics. What does it mean for an HR department to properly manage data? What's the story? So, the basics. Before rolling out reporting, data visualization or AI tools, HR departments must develop a real data culture, and this depends much more on precision and intuition than it does on tech tools. It's true that you often hear, during a bout of everyone's favorite pastime, HR bashing, that HR departments don't have a figure-based culture. This jab underscores a lack of credibility, and maybe even a complex, with respect to finance departments, for example. So, proper data management is a key element for establishing the legitimacy of HR departments. It's not the only one. Quality of service. Cost management and risk management are also crucial, but that's another topic. The effective of a process depends on the quality of the data it uses transforms, and delivers so that the players involved can make informed decisions. A company's agility and the effectiveness of the HR department depend not only on the alignment of the department's processes with the overall strategy of the company, but also on internal coherency and consistency within the department and between the different HR processes. The quality and integrity of the data are crucial. How can we work together if we can barely agree in an XCOM meeting on the number of employees and their career paths? How can we convince a CEO to invest in a management training program if we can't tell him how many managers we have? In practice, we are often confronted with conflicting figures because the numbers come from different, separate, and sometimes incompatible systems, or because they aren't underpinned by shared, consistent definitions. It's easy to forget where the data comes from how it's gathered, and what it means. HR professionals need to boost their data skills. There are prerequisites for proper data management, and, unfortunately, they aren't met all that often. Like everyone having the same information at the same time, a single indicator must have the same value at the same time, regardless of who's looking at it. And that's no small feat in big international, decentralized companies. And the indicator in question must be updated. That said, there's no need to go overboard. In human resources, there's no need to give in to the tyranny of real time and everything we do. It can be costly and not particularly useful. But, in addition to the indicator, we also need to share a single definition. A piece of information must mean the same thing regardless of the player it's presented to, or where, or when they consult it. You're absolutely right. The definition has to be shared. And we also need to think about the way data is codified to prevent interpretive bias. You know the expression. You can make statistics say anything. To recap, proper data management is a key element for establishing the legitimacy of HR departments. To achieve it, they must develop both data skills and a data culture to ensure everyone is on the same page. Is that right? Exactly right. Way to make a long story short. Story RH, the podcast that makes a long story short.